Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 16 QPR3 Beta 2 that I have here on my 10 Pro XL to show you all the new changes. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the update size and the build number. Here on the 10 Pro XL, the update size is 509 megabytes. And the build number is CP11.251.209.007.a1. But for the first time ever, there is a different build number for the Pixel 6 and 7 models, and it's exactly the same, excluding the dot .a1 at the end. And now let's take a look at the new features. The new features in this build are mainly from the latest version of Android Canary 2601, and the first change I'm going to show you is the updated widget handles. For reference, here is a side-by-side -side comparison with QPR3 Beta 1, and the first change you will notice is the border and the handles are using two different colors to stand out, while previously it was using the same color for both, plus the unfunctional handle is now hidden, while previously the four handles always appear no matter what. So for example, when I push it to the other side, now the right handle is gone, but when I make it bigger, now it appears because I can use it, while in the other scenario, this handle is no longer needed and that's why it disappeared. Under the wallpaper and the style app, we got two new changes from Android Canary. The first one is related to the loading animation. When you tap on the effects button for the first time, you will see a slight change. Now the animated shapes are no longer using a container around them when you tap on the button. The second change is the ability to reposition the image inside the frame. So now, as you see, I can move my finger around and reposition the image with the haptic feedback when I push the image all the way to the edge to let me know that I cannot move it any further. And you get it at all, at all corners. Not only this, but now you don't have the ability to change the shape by swiping right and left, but you need to tap on the shape at the bottom. You can also reposition the image under the weather. Tap. Under the quick settings, we got a minor visual tweak. When you tap and hold on the flashlight overlay to adjust the brightness, you'll notice here that the maximum brightness line at the top is now bolder to make it easier to see. But the most exciting change in this build is the big jump in the Geekbench 6 GPU score. So when you take a look here, I got 4,558, while previously I was barely touching the 4,000 points mark which is about 500 more points after installing this update. So it seems like this build comes with the latest GPU drivers we've been waiting for for a very long time. In contrast, the 3D Mark scores are about the same. I got 3,138, which is very close to the 3,178 I got on the 18th of December running the Wildlife Extreme test. But I'm happy to see the extra 500 points under Geekbench 6 which definitely represents some sort of improvement. Before jumping to the next chapter, if you like my wallpapers, let me show you the latest collection added to the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. I recently added more than 90 new wallpapers that will make your phone look impressive, and you've seen some of them throughout the video. With the ability to download any of these wallpapers locally on the device to apply the live effects of Android 16 on them, and here is how you can download the wallpaper. If you are interested, you will find the Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to QPR3 Beta 2. Moving to the settings, we only got one new change from Android Canary, which is the redesigned system page. So when you go to system, you will see here that everything is now categorized with a title at the top, instead of having one full stack like before. So now things make a lot more sense and are easier to find. Plus, the circle to search toggle is now showing on the front page instead of having it under the navigation mode settings like before. Now, let's talk about the bug fixes. Even though this build doesn't come with a massive number of new features, but it comes with a good number of bug fixes, which is nice in case you want to install it on your daily driver. So, let's go through them one by one. The first fix is an issue where the app drawer could become unresponsive when scrolling which required updates to how UI elements were rendered. Android Auto incorrectly logs extensive screen time impacting battery life. Graphical glitches and the performance degradation when interacting with the notification shade in full screen or picture-in-picture -picture modes 
by improving display rendering and an ex extensive battery drain issue occurring overnight by optimizing background uh, process power consumption an issue where the battery charging limit was not being respected causing devices to charge to 100% instead of the set limit an issue where users experienced slow internet speeds on Wi-Fi due to a Wi-Fi connection bug then we have a crash when accessing radio information settings users experienced a noticeable delay and lack of feedback when switching audio outputs to speakerphone during calls this was resolved by improving audio routing logic a display issue causing screen, screen flickering when whacking the device from always on display by updating system with view an issue where certain apps including microsoft applications managed by intune were crashing on a startup due to a compatibility problem with the android system that has now been resolved an issue causing inconsistent or failed wireless charging and slow wired charging by improving the power management system and lastly we have a fix for a system crash that occurred when folding a foldable device with an app open by fixing an issue with activity lifecycle management during device state changes so these are all the bug fixes but we still have some ongoing issues that i face for a very long time on daily basis and i hope google will give extra attention to these issues and get them fixed as soon as possible the first one is related to the device controls you will always see this white flash when you open it if you have your device set to light theme the second issue is related to some of the quick setting styles that take a very long time to open so let me show you some of the examples when you tap on quick share it takes more than four seconds to show the page on the screen without any kind of feedback to let you know that it's currently loading uh, also when i tap on the tv remote as you see it has some sort of delay and sometimes it takes longer than this and also sometimes the security and the privacy tile takes a very long time to open but currently it works just fine last but not least the night light settings page is now broken and it only shows a white screen and i started to face this problem with qpr3 beta 1 however when you tap on the toggle the feature works as expected now let's talk about my experience with this build while filming the video and i gotta say that this build is very stable and responsive as if i'm running the stable version no problems no show stoppers the scrolling is very smooth and the app launching speed is very fast the only issues i had with this build i already covered in the previous chapter but i also faced the same exact problems on the stable version so there is no difference between the two and if you are wondering about the geekbench scores I got 5,955 for the multi-core and 2,291 for the single core, which is about the same as the previous version. And I already covered the massive jump in the GPU score. Now we have 4,558 up from 3,974, which probably means that Google updated the GPU drivers with this build. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new changes in Android 16 QPR3 Beta 2. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.